Hello everyone, so today I am here to do my December wrap-up, the last wrap-up of 2020. And unfortunately, this wrap-up is probably not going to be that great. I acknowledge now that this is probably going to be my shortest and my most boring wrap-up I've ever done. Because in December, quite honestly, reading just didn't happen. I prioritized other things. I really hate when people like say every single time that they didn't when they aren't reading is like a reading slump. I wasn't in a reading slump, I was just doing 500 other things. So reading just did not happen. In December, I finished my thesis. I finished all of my finals for my classes. I graduated, you know, the holidays happened and I experienced probably the worst burnout of my life. Still experiencing, let's get real here. Still experiencing the worst burnout of my life. I literally was working as in like sitting down and writing, not even procrastinating because I've talked before that I am not someone who I'm like, oh, I was working for six hours, but like four of those hours I was just fucking around on my laptop. I was genuinely sitting down to work and write my thesis and my finals for upwards of 12 hours a day for like 20 days straight. <laughs> so needless to say, I didn't have that much time for other things and um, after I was done, I didn't feel like doing much. So I prioritized other things, aka school, which obviously comes first. And then I also watched two K-dramas this month, which honestly, no regrets. It was great. Now I did read 12 things technically, but the reason I'm saying that it's going to be such a boring wrap up and I don't really consider that like a good 12 books is because five of them are theory that I actually listed on Goodreads because I read the majority of the book. Like I didn't just read a chapter from it. I read the majority of the book for my thesis for finals. And then six books are manga. <laughs> and then so one real novel is what I read this month. So again, it's probably gonna be really short because especially the theory, I have like two words to say about each thing. So let's just get on into it. So the first piece of theory that I read was the Routledge uh, Companion to Adaptation Studies. This in the Oxford, I just basically have to reread every semester. <laughs> if you guys somehow didn't know or if you're new here, um, my focus is in adaptation. So the Routledge and the Oxford are just constantly being reread. <laughs> I am constantly using these two books. So the Routledge Companion is great. I think it's a little bit better than the Oxford if I'm completely honest. Um, and yeah. That's basically it. It's about adaptation. If you're interested in it, there you go. And then I read just one of the boys, which was about women in theater um, and something called breaches, which is basically when a woman cross dresses as a man while performing. And obviously I was looking at Peter Pan and Peter is always played by a woman, so I was looking into this just for a context and a history of theater and women in theater. Um, and this one was actually really, really interesting to me. I actually just read a little bit too much of this book just because I was interested in it. Like I didn't use a lot of it, but I did think it was really fascinating. And also just hearing about these powerful women who like kind of made names for themselves. Um, also they did talk about Nina Bosikalt. Um, I hope that's how you say it. I'm sorry if it's not. Who is the woman who first played Peter? And it was really fascinating because I love theater. <laughs> and then I read a whole bunch of essays from Queer Slash Adaptation, which is edited by Pamela DeMori, who also has written things in the Routledge and Oxford Adaptation um, Companions. And this is basically all about queer theory. And this was so fascinating just to me as a queer person interested in adaptation. Um, and I also just love the like kind of use of the word queer as in like LGBT but also to queer as a verb means to change something. Um, and I thought this this was fascinating and also I was so, <laughs> it was so funny. There was this one article in this that is all about basically K-pop fan fiction. It was written by a man. I even like googled him and everything to see who he was and he's like this old professor dude who wrote an entire article all about um fan fiction in Asian cultures and like the creation of fan fiction and queering of people in Asian cultures. It was fascinating. So yeah, this one was really interesting. 
if you want to look into queer adaptation. Um, I also looked into the Victorian male body and this one, god, I don't remember what I read from it. Oh, I think this was the one that had stuff about um, being disabled in Victorian London because obviously I was looking at Captain Hook in one of my thesis chapters and he's a disabled man. So yeah, <laughs> I can't remember that one that well. <laughs> Oh, and I also read Narrative Prosthesis by David T. Mitchell, and if you are in disability studies or interested in disability studies, highly recommend this book because literally every article I was reading for my dis disability chapter of my thesis references this book, so I read it and it is fantastic. <laughs> I just think that this was such a great book and so, so helpful. Um, so yeah, if you're in disability studies and kind of, or are going into it, this is a perfect place to start um, for academic disability studies because it really is the basis of so many theses in disability, um, for like literature also. Disability studies is in like every single corner of academia. <laughs> I'm talking about literature studies, obviously. But okay, those are all of the theory books that I read um, and now we're getting on into the physical books I read. Let's start with the one novel I actually read. Oh, we'll get a little surprise visit from the Scoober. This will make this wrap up better, right? Hi Scooby. Hi baby. Oh, he loves to like lick. I mean he likes to lick everything but he particularly likes to lick my face because I wear moisturizer. But yeah, this is Scooby. I don't know how many of you guys have met him yet. I feel like he's been in a lot of videos that like didn't get a lot of views because December. So this is Scoobs. He's a good boy. He's our new puppy. He's not a puppy. He's five years old. Scooby, say hello to the people. Hello. <laughs> he's a teacup Yorkie, by the way, if anyone was interested in that. So, do you want to say with me why I review some books? Why not? Um, the one novel that I read this month was Hitchers by Will McIntosh. Yes, it took me like literally three weeks to read this 250 page book. <laughs> it was a little pathetic. But um, yes, I read Hitchers by Will McIntosh. Um, I bought a whole bunch of Will McIntosh books literally back in like the summer and I literally haven't read any of them and I'm really annoyed with myself for doing that. So I finally started in on this and I actually did really really like this so it was worth it. Basically Will McIntosh writes really really interesting speculative dystopian books and they're all pretty short um, and I obviously love the speculative dystopian, it's one of my favorite genres. And I had read one other of his books, um, Burning Midnight, a couple of years ago and absolutely loved it. And so I wanted to pick up more about him so I decided to go for this one next. Hey Ben, what's up? Do you want to say hello too? We'll just fill the time here with the animals. <laughs> I feel like you can tell from me picking both of them up that yes, Ben is like four times the size of Scooby. Scooby's like five, maybe six pounds. Ben is um 18. <laughs> ben, you're such a big boy. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> They've been very jealous of each other. But yes, in this world, honestly, I can't decide whether or not it was like, I like reading about dystopians during an actual pandemic because this one even has to do with a pandemic and it was kind of weird reading about it. Oh, thanks, Ben. Okay, please, please, please. Basically, there is an anthrax attack, like terrorist attack on Atlanta and anthrax is like this flu-like thing that I don't, I don't even really understand what it is. It's like a virus, obviously, um, and it kills you like very, very quickly in it, but it appears kind of like a flu. And apparently it is actually a thing that like Russia has some store of anthrax. I don't know, but um, it's playing off of that. And there is a terrorist attack in Atlanta using anthrax and it kills like 600,000 people like within the course of like two or three days. So, Weird things start to happen, including our main character who died during the anthrax attack, but not from anthrax. He died from a car accident and was resuscitated and brought back to life. And after that happens, he suddenly has this weird voice come up from within him and he is realizing that other people are experiencing the same thing. And it's kind of these weird creatures that are inside of the living 
from all of these people dying. And it was really, really cool. I did really, really like this book. The premise is amazing. The writing and pacing are flawless. Um, and I gave it a four star. Honestly, that's just probably because I had to read it over the course of like three weeks. Maybe it was four weeks to be completely honest. Um, and it definitely hindered my enjoyment just a little bit taking that long on it. So I do really recommend this book. And I think if I reread it, it would probably be a five star. The next book is actually not a manga, it's actually also a book, but there's a manga adaptation for it, and that is I Had the Same Dream Again by Yoru Sumino, and if you recognize this, I read the manga version last month, and I actually wrote one of my final essays on this, like, book adaptation thing, um, because, yeah, they're both by Yoru Sumino, and they both tell the exact same story. A lot of people keep asking me, should I pick up the novel or the manga first, and it's the exact same story. Like, there is very, very few um, changes to the story. Like, that's kind of the point of these adaptations, is to make them as identical as possible. Even the covers look similar. So, I would just say, if you like reading books, read the book. If you like reading manga, read the manga. If you like both, I think I would recommend the manga, personally, just because this book is written quite young. It's for, like, middle school, early high school age kids. So yeah, um, I personally would recommend the manga, but I also prefer manga usually as a medium. So speaking of manga, for the last week of the month, I decided to just binge a whole bunch of manga that I had sitting on my shelf. So first off, I have Become You, and this is by Ichigo Takano, and this is the author of Orange and also Dream and Sun. This is her or his, I'd actually have no clue. This is their new series, um, and honestly, I loved Orange and hated Dream and Sun, so I was interested to pick up their next series to see what it would be about. And basically, we follow a young boy who grew up really, really great at art, but gave it up to become a musician, even though he kind of sucks at music. <laughs> um, and then a boy who grew up as a musician who gave it up and really wants to be an artist kind of thing. And then colliding. Um, I'm really confused, I'm not gonna lie, because this first volume stands perfectly on its own and I really don't know why you would continue it from here or how you would continue it from here. I think this first volume is a perfect one-shot story, you know what I mean? Um, it was very cute, it was very wholesome, it was very inspiring. I really like the characters, um, but I really don't know where she would go or from here, or they would go, I don't know the gender of this author, I'm sorry, um, I don't know where you'd go from here, um, but I really enjoyed this first volume and I gave it like a four star. And then I caught up into my favorite series, you guys have heard me talk about it a million times, Comey Can't Communicate Volume 9 and Volume 10. I liked both of these volumes, but my biggest thing is I'm really curious how this author is going to continue this story and make, like, keep it interesting and unique because I think I just saw it the most, especially in this 10th volume, because they start a new year at school in the 10th volume. Um, Komi goes into freshman year in the first book, and now they're in sophomore year, and it very much felt a little repetitive. Not even repetitive, it just felt like the author definitely knows what they want to do with this story, and it's just gonna keep happening over and over. And I looked it up on Goodreads, and there are literally 20 volumes out in Japan of this series already and I'm so curious how they're going to continue making this book like this series and keeping it like fresh um because yeah the 10th volume was the first one I think I gave a three star just because I didn't like I I liked it it was fine but I definitely was like ooh, I don't know how you're gonna keep doing this for too much longer and then I also caught up in Beastars this is volume 8 and volume 9 I am so happy. Uh, volume 9 I really really loved because the last couple of volumes, I want to say like volume maybe 6 and 7 and then like half of 8, were kind of build up volumes, you know? Not like filler, like they all had very important information and important plot points happening, but they were very much like building up to something bigger and finally in volume 9 like a bigger thing happens. We actually get quite a lot of information in volume 9 and actually one of my favorite things in this series that um, Paru Togaki started doing in volume 8 was actually giving us a perspective that we hadn't read from before. So like just random characters from this world that we hadn't seen before. So 
I actually really, really enjoyed Volume 9. And Volume 8 was also really good, but I was kind of just missing a couple of our characters. Ben, what's up? Do you have very passionate feelings about these stars? Would you like to say some words? Thank you. Good. I also agree. It's a good series. But yeah, like in Volume 8, we literally saw Haru for like two panels. Like, I was just kind of missing a couple of our old characters um, because obviously so much has changed since the beginning of this series. Um, but yeah, I'm so happy to say at Volume 9, I am so back into this. I'm so like, yes, this is a favorite series and it's proving itself. So yes, I really, really enjoyed these. Um, and they're great. <laughs> but anyways, that's all I read for uh, December of 2020. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and definitely watch out for my end of the year videos that will be coming out after this. So yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and definitely leave down in the comments below what you read in December, what's your favorite thing you read in December. And anyways, I love y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye.